Hi everyone, back again. Gonna have a crack at part four. Part four, we're gonna use the speed square, which I know most of you have. We're gonna use the speed square to do exactly the same eight pedals. It's not a different method to the roofing square. It's just bringing the components of the roofing square into an easier format. So the misconception sometimes is, oh, this is a different method. It's not, it's exactly the same method, as I said, just in a different format. I'm gonna use a Sharpie just for the purposes so you all can see the mark out on the bevel block. And then we'll check the bevels off the speed square with what we did in the calculations as a double check on what we've done. Speed squares are great. As you know, they've got the degrees of the pitch of the roof on the inside radius there. And as you move out, they have the ratio gauge for the common jack or the common rafter and the jack rafter. And for the hip and valley cuts as well. So I'm really lucky this speed square has a floating gate. I'm gonna move the floating gate to 24 degrees. The top of the gate there is to 24 degrees. I'm gonna put it on the edge of the bevel block. I'm gonna mark my plum bevel common rafter. And if I swap that over while it's there, and just give myself a line square from that without moving the gate. As you can see, that also gives me level bevel common rafter. So there's bevel one, and there's bevel two. Plum bevel common rafter, level bevel common rafter. That's fantastic. To get edge bevel common rafter, number three, I've got a little bit of a trick. And a little bit of a trick, if you can mark the thickness of the material that you're using for the rafters, in this case 35 millimetres, square off the line of the plumb cut, so square back down that line, 35 mil, I'm just going to line up my fourfold on the 900, 10, 20, 35, I'm going to put a little mark there without changing my speed square, still on the 24 degrees, I'm going to reset it to the top of the bevel block, I'm going to line it up with that little mark and I'm just going to put a little indicator on the top edge. What I'm going to do from that little indicator, I'm going to connect that across the edge to the original plumb line that I marked for the roof, the plumb cut. As you can see now, I've squared the original plumb cut bevel one across the edge. I've come in 35 and I've just struck a mark of the 24 degree point. 24 degree plumb for the thickness of the material and I'm going to connect where that meets the edge to the corner of where I've squared across so the line will come across the edge. I'm going to use the fourfold to do that. I'm going to just as accurately as I can while I'm showing you connect those two. That's bevel three, that's edge bevel common rafter, right there. So, square off the plumb cut, 35, the thickness of the rafter material, plumb that line up on the 24 degree pitch, in this case that's the pitch of the roof, S square the original plumb cut across, connect the two across the edge of the material, and you get the edge bevel. We can prove that if we get the sliding bevel, and we put it and align it with that edge bevel that we just marked. 
That is pretty close there. I can come over here where I marked originally my plumb bevel, level bevel and edge bevel, number three, and I can align that with the edge of my material there. And you can see it's exactly the same edge bevel, number three. So as I said before, it's not a different system we're using. It's the same system in a different format. So that's great. I've got plumb bevel common rafter, level bevel common rafter, edge bevel common rafter. What I'm going to do now is mark number four and five, plumb bevel hip, level bevel hip. When I originally had the speed square at 24 degrees, like that, and you can see I'll mark that, there's a gauge here down on the another radius gauge that shows the common jacks, or the common rafters and the jack rafters, the hip cuts or the hip jacks, and the hip and valley cuts. And while that's set to 24 degrees, I'm going to look at what number is sitting in the common rafters because the degrees and the number for the common rafters will align. And you probably can't see from where you are, but 24 degrees at that point pretty much aligns. I'll just reset it, it slipped a little bit. With it one degree past five on there, so it's not up to six yet, it's just past five on the common rafter gauge. So while it's sitting there, knowing it's just past five, if I want the plumb cut, I now come across for the plumb cut for the hip on the inside, that's what I'm looking for, and I readjust that to just past five on that gauge, one degree past five there, there it is, and I'll lock it off. Now on the hip, plumb cut, and that's now what I've got. And I can actually mark that on my bevel block. There's the plumb cut for the hip in a 24 degree pitch roof. I'll mark the bevel, and I'll indicate that's number four. If I strike a line square off that, by the time it meets the top edge, that will be level bevel hip. And I can do that exactly the same way I did that last time with this particular style of speed square. I can roll it around like that without changing the gate. I can mark a line square off that. Continue that line to the outside edge. And that is level bevel hit, number five. So I've got one, two, three, plumb bevel, level bevel, edge bevel, common rafter. I've got four and five, plumb and level bevel hip. Now I want edge bevel hip. So I'm gonna follow exactly the same process that I did for the common rafter up here. I'm gonna measure the thickness of the material that I'm using on the bevel block, 35 mil. Part of me out along that square line. The line struck perpendicular to the plumb cut. There it is. I'm going to put a mark there. I'm going to transfer that on the hip plumb cut up to the edge of the material. I'm going to put a nice clear mark there. That looks like 30. No, no, that's 35. That's perfect. I'm going to square the original hip plumb line across the edge of the timber, just like I did before when I demonstrated the... There it is, that's the hip plumb cut squared across, and from that corner I'm going to connect that corner where the face meets the edge of that line, or the end of that line, to where I've plumbed up on the hip plumb line the 35mm. If I connect those two points, as accurately as I can for the demonstration. That's edge bevel hip right there. Number six. So plumb bevel hip, level bevel hip, edge bevel hip. And again, we can prove it is. I can hear you saying, ah, oh, no, that can't be right. She certainly is. I'm just going to set the sliding bevel to that angle that we've just marked. That looks pretty good there. 
I'm going to walk over to number six here on the original roofing square. Set out, I'm going to line them up there, and you can see it's exactly the same bevel. Has to be. So you know it works. That's great. The last two that we need here are face bevel purling and edge bevel purling. And we don't really have a reference for those on the block or coming off the speed square, but I'm going to show you how easy it is based on the original numbers that we used for the steel square. You can see with face bevel purlin, we were dealing with the rise of the roof, 134, and we were dealing with true length common rafter, 329. True length common rafter. 1.095 was our original true length per metre. We multiplied by 0.3 and we got 329. And the rise of 134. So what I'm going to do on the bevel block, I'm just going to square a line straight across it. Just down here at the edge on the end of the bevel block. I'm going to do it so you can all see it, hopefully. There it is. And I'm going to make that square line represent the measurement on the blade, the 329. How am I going to do that? Well, that's an easy one. Just going to grab a calculator. If I want that line to represent 329, I can ratio the ratio to 329 in relation to the width of the timber that my square line is marked across. This is a piece of 90 mil, 90 by 35. It's 90 on that edge. <coughs> Pardon me. So if I divide 90 by 329, that tells me my answer is 0.274. That's a ratio. That's a ratio between 90 across my timber on the square line and the 329 that I'm actually after. 90 divided by 329 equals 0.274. While that number's sitting there, 0.274, I want to strike a square line across the edge at 90 degrees for that first line to represent the rise of 134. What length will I make it? Well, while that ratio number is sitting there, I can multiply it by the 134, the rise, and it tells me I've got a line of 36 and a half millimetres. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark 36 and a half millimetres perpendicular to my original line there, 36 and a half, there it is. I'll draw it in so you can see it, whoops. That represents the rise. And I'm gonna connect those two. There they are connected. It tells us the bevel, face bevel purling is on the tongue. Well that 36 and a half mil represented the tongue. So the bevel that I'm after is that bevel right there. That bevel there with the bevel indicator in it is bevel number seven, face bevel purling. We can prove that, like we've proved the others. I take the sliding bevel and I align it off the edge, the stock on the edge and the blade, lining up with the line I've marked for number seven, that's face bevel purling. I walk around here, I find number seven, there it is, and I line that up with the edge of the material there. Look at that. The stock is on the edge. The blade is running down in a line with the original bevel for number seven. So we've easily done bevel number seven, face bevel. The last one we need to do is edge bevel purling. Again, it's 329. On the blade, it's the same that the face bevel was for one of the components on the blade. 
but the distance on the tongue this time is 300. The distance on the tongue before was 134, but now it's 300. So the only measurement we have to change is the distance of this length across what was the rise before in the face bevel. I need to work this to be 300 across that edge. So, as I originally said before, and we'll just run over it one more time, in order to work the ratio out, it was the 90 millimetres for the line struck square, divided by the 329, the distance that we wanted on the blade, the long distance. And that's what I did before. So 90, 90 divided by 329 equals 0.274. For bevel 7, we multiplied that by the 134. This time, we want to multiply it by the 300. So times 300 tells me I need a line 82, 82 millimetres now across that edge. And if I strike those two and join them up, then I'll have, oh, pardon me, edge bevel purlin, the last bevel I'm after. So 82 millimetres. Again, from that original line, I'm going to go 82 millimetres. I've just got my fourfold on there. I've lined up zero on one of the hundreds with that mark. I'm going to go 82 millimetres. Going to put a little mark there. I'm going to draw it to that point. So that would represent the 300. I'm going to connect them back to what represents the 329. Hopefully you can see me doing this clearly. It's a little bit awkward working over shoulder, but we'll get there. Yep, that'll do it. Yep, yep, that'll do it. Bevel indicator in the corner, and there's bevel eight. Edge bevel purlin. So I've got face bevel purlin and edge bevel purlin now. And again, we can check it, prove it's correct. So we know it's not a different system, it's just another way of doing the same thing. Put the stock up on the edge, run the blade in line with the angle that we just marked. Walk around. Identify number eight that was originally off the steel square, still done with the same component lengths. And if I line that up with the edge, you can see, look at that, it's exactly the same bevel. So there we go. The steel square transfers to the speed square, giving you a much quicker system of marking out your eight bevels so you can cut the angles correctly for the components in the roof. Next. Yep, pattern rafter. That's next. That's what we'll do next. I think we're there now. For the pattern rafter, because we have all the bevels that we need, we're really going to be concentrating now on our original key five. The original key five unlocks the bevels for us and it also gives us the cutting lengths. Till then.